That is my favourite record of all time. It's, of course, by Wonder Dog. Uh, and uh, it brings us on uh, to we have a very dog-based show this uh, is tonight. Uh, but uh, we're going to talk about uh, sniffer dogs in prisons. Uh, the prison service is worried that these dogs uh, could be racist. Uh, if their handlers have the wrong attitude. So in other words, if their handlers have unconscious bias, you know, that thing where you don't think you're a racist, but you are. If they have unconscious bias and they are basically deep down racist, then the dogs will adopt those traits and will end up with racist dogs. Well, they say we already have got racist dogs in the prison service. Uh, when I'm saying all this, I'm being actually serious. Uh, they, they, the prison service is seriously worried that dogs may pick up on their handlers unconscious bias and become racists i mean what next homophobic cats unbelievable let's talk uh, to a contributor to the young voices uk organization uh, ariana wold uh, good evening ariana Good evening. Very, very happy to be here. I love your dancing, by the way. That was incredible to witness. Yeah, the, the dad dancing at its very worst. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not even a dad. Uh, but uh, this is mad, isn't it? The racist dogs. This is the new thing we have to worry about. This woke nonsense uh, that we have to put up with day in, day out. We've now uh, officially gone over the edge, if you ask me, into utter lunacy by worrying that sniffer dogs in prisoners might be racists. Yes, I, I wholly agree. I think even the idea that a dog could be inherently racist is just completely ridiculous. But I do think that this particular story has a very important message to be taken away from. Um, when I first saw the guidance that had been released by Her Majesty's Prison and Probation Service, um, it did strike me as kind of odd, given that when it was first released back in 2011, it was met with the most incredible backlash by both the people who had participated in the study and of course just the general media um do you remember the backlash that surrounded this particular research no, well no but uh, let it lay it out for the listeners and the viewers okay so it was a study that was first published back in 2011 by a lady called lisa lit and what it was is these dog handlers were asked to take their dogs around for a specially prepared area to just have a look for explosives now the premise of this was that it would be a test of the dog's performance not their own or their inherent or unconscious bias or whatever it was for the dogs and how well they can do the job they were trained to do um, but in fact, there, there were no explosives. That, that was a complete lie. But some sections had these little hidden sausages um, so as to attract the dog's attention and where the explosives would have been or where the dog handlers were told the explosives would be. There were these huge, big red warning signs so as to attract the dog handler's attention. And what the study concluded was that a lot of the false positive alerts, that, because remember, there were no explosives here, the false positive alerts the dogs had come up with, there were over 200 of these, actually. Um, this wasn't because the dogs were detecting or smelling anything. It was because of the dog owner's reaction. So the handlers might have, I don't know, looked at the, the red yeah. warning sign for too long or like made a gesture towards it. And they've taken this as evidence that actually any small reaction or, or, or semblance mm -hmm. of prejudice of, of any kind um, towards something, an object or a person, whatever it may be, could affect the dog's performance. And therefore, in a situation you can imagine where you have uh, inherent or unconscious bias or whatever within a dog handler or a police officer on duty, if the dog were to detect certain body movements or body language, uh, yeah. that this could influence their decision and their ability to do their job correctly, which is very, very presumptuous to say the least. And that was the opinion of the dog handlers yeah. and the media at the time. It's certainly, it's certainly presumptuous to suggest that if the uh, handler, the dog handler in a prison, uh, you know, has unconscious bias, has uh, is unconsciously racist, uh, that the dog becomes racist. I mean, this is the absurdity uh, that we've ended up with uh, but uh, how many times uh, Ariana do you think that the authorities of this country are going to have to be told that unconscious bias is a load of rubbish it's a discredited science uh, before they stop uh, paying heed to it I mean that is exactly the problem isn't it it is the lack of communication between both researchers and, and woke activists and, and people who are on 
certain committees and the police themselves. It's just a complete breakdown of everybody just espousing whatever ideology they've come up with uh, and making zero progress on actually reducing racial inequality. And I think within the police, this is actually such a contentious issue, both in America and the UK, obviously America being where the study was actually published and where the researchers were from. So the fact that this hasn't been able to be carried out in a way that is constructive and, and has has led to real progress because after this research, this bit of research, the dog handlers refused to have any any further ties to the researchers and the research that they said needed to be done to, to actually confirm their little hypothesis wasn't able to be carried out because there was a complete breakdown of communication. So I think it's not about how many times necessarily um, this unconscious bias needs to be refuted. It's more about establishing those channels of communication between all relevant actors. Yes, uh, you know, the point about unconscious bias, it, it is the process by which uh, uh, obsessives find racism where there is no racism. In other yeah. words, you say to someone, you know, I would say I'm not a racist. I would say I don't care about the color of people's skins. And they go, ah, well, that proves you are a racist because you could, should care about the color of their skins. Uh, in other words, uh, they find racism where it is not. It is a completely... Yeah discredited science a discre completely discredited process and yet here we have the prison service uh, still going on about it worrying that their employees the prison wardens with sniffer dogs uh, that they have unconscious bias and they might pass this unconscious bias onto the dogs unconscious bias is a load of garbage yeah, I think it certainly doesn't help. You know, it's hard to have a constructive conversation where fingers are just being pointed in every which direction. Um, but I think it was quite interesting, actually, when I was having a read earlier at, at how this story has been put out. Um, the kind of places that, that I was finding it and actually it just made me think a lot um, about just how much um, this, both whether it's the media themselves or, or the woke, I suppose, the activists, um, have just skewed this conversation completely and it is sad to see because when it comes down to it i think a lot of these researchers like lisa lit they know that if they throw unconscious bias at, at the conclusion of their report that it's, it's going to be quite a hit and i think um that's also another thing to consider when we're looking at how um how these headlines have come about uh i only saw this in the telegraph for example the times and the daily mirror and these are publications who have who have managed to create quite a reputation for themselves and actually deepening this racial divide that we have here in, in Britain. So once again, I think just having that in the headlines, it, it, having that in the headlines ha has, yeah, it, it just, it, I think furthers that that sense of yeah. sensationalism that, yeah. that we do see when it comes to conversations of this nature. Yeah, well, here's what I'd say is I don't believe in uh, unconscious bias. I think it's a load of garbage. So I don't believe that uh, these prison officers have unconscious bias. And they're, by extension, I certainly don't believe that their dogs have unconscious bias. Uh, you know, no. why do these woke warriors lead us into such absurd areas? Uh, listen, Ariana, great to talk to you. Let's talk again soon. Ariana Thank Wald you. there, contributor to Young Voices UK.